Hi Stampin' Friends, it's Chris Slogar from BuckeyeInklings.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this pop-up flower pot card. It's a 3D card and as you can see it fits in a regular medium envelope. When you pull it out and pull it into the open position, it makes a little flower pot, a 3D flower pot. Now, I've also included a band because if somebody would like to display that, just slip the band under the flower pot there and it also slides under the greeting and you can set that up on a windowsill or countertop. All right, so it's made from some pretty easy pieces. Let's get started with the base. I have two four inch squares one is blueberry bushel cardstock and one is a coordinating designer paper. I also have for the band a one inch by nine inch strip of cardstock scored at two and three eighth and six and a half. And then for the support piece on the base, I have a one half inch by four inch strip that's scored at one, two and three inches. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is Attach the designer paper to the cardstock square, and in that way, just create a really sturdy base. Okay, so I'm going to um, put those together. We're going to want to let this dry before we fold it so that the pieces don't slip relative to each other. But I am going to round the corners of the base here. And we'll also make the band while this is drying. Okay, so we're gonna take that one inch by nine inch piece. And as I said, that scored at two and three eighths and six and a half. And I'm just going to um, attach it together where the pieces overlap, where the fold overlaps. Okay, and that will be that will be the, the band piece to hold that open. All right, now this is probably dry enough. I'm going to take the base piece and score it in one direction um, in half. So I'm going to score it at two inches. Okay, and that's a pretty thick piece. So um, I'm going to go ahead and burnish that. And then I'll take this piece that we've created, the support piece, and you can see it's in four sections. Now, we're going to attach this right at the center of this base piece. So I wanna find that center point. This is four inches wide. So I'm making a mark here on that fold at two inches. Okay, and then I'm going to attach the support piece in just the center two sections. Okay, so I'm going to add my Tombow glue and I'm using Tombow so I can get good coverage like right up to the edges here. Um, in the center two sections, I'm adding adhesive and then I'm going to line up the center score with the, the fold here on the base and I'm also locating this right at the center point that we marked. Okay, and then we're going to get that nice and straight. And we're also going to let this dry before we start trying to fold it, okay? Because we don't want it to get forced up by the by the folding. Okay, so we'll we'll set those two pieces aside. Now, our flower pot is green, and let's get started making that. The the bulk of the flower pot, um, that big piece is one and three quarters by seven and a half. And it's scored at two and five and a half. And I'm not going to put those um, pieces together yet. I'm not going to attach that. Now you can see we want a hard crease there because as the flower pot folds, as it closes, the pot has to flatten to fit in an envelope. Okay. So I am going to um, burnish those as I have and then take my bone folder before I attach the back and start adding some curve to the pot because we wanna break down the fibers a bit in this piece so that the pot will naturally want to curve. 
Okay, and we're doing this before we before we attach the back together, okay, so we can get a really nice curve. We're going to do the same piece with this rim piece, which is one half inch by eight, and it's scored at two and one eighth and five and seven eighths. Okay, so we're going to um, burnish that and also add some curve to it with our bone folder. Now, once we have that done, we can lay this down flat, add adhesive along that seam in the back, and, and close up that seam. Okay, so then you have the base of the pot there, and we have the rim here. And again, we're, we're folding that flat. All right, so you can see that the rim is just a little bit bigger than the base, all right? And we're going to attach that here and here with a dimensional. So let me get my dimensionals. I've got some minis here that will just fit nicely. We're going to put one at the top back where the rim will attach and also at the front um, center there. Okay, so we'll start at the back because we can pretty easily see that the seams need to align. And uh, just carefully, we're going to put the rim around the pot. We want the side edges to fold flat together. Now that, that hooked up before I wanted it to. We want to kind of center Center it so the um, overhang on each side is about the same. Okay, so I've got the back attached and then it's easy to attach the front. Okay. All right, so there's, there's our pot piece. Okay, we'll pull this base back into play. Now this should be nice and dry and we can even burnish that. Now, the support pieces will come up into the pot and attach to the inside of the pot. So what we're going to do now on these um, last two sections, the end sections, we're going to add Tombow glue there as well. And this is how we will connect to the pot. So keeping those slightly kind of folded out of the way, we're going to take our pot piece and surround the support. Now we want the fold on each end of the pot to align with the fold on the base. Okay, and then we also want to center this. And once we have accomplished that, we can press the pot to the glue on those support pieces. And then easier to um, dry it if you push the pot together close like this and give it a firm press and let that dry in position there. Okay, I'm going to put a weight on that and show you the next pieces. Okay, so we have two window sheet pieces that make up the support for the flowers inside. And the window sheet pieces measure one half inch by five and a half inches. And that one, you can score it in half or just fold it in half. It's pretty easy to fold in half, but you do have to um, burnish it pretty hard. The window sheet is a, a tough material. So you wanna give it a good press with your bone folder. I've already added one half inch of sticky strip to each end of that the that leg okay of those legs okay and my second window sheet piece is one half inch by six and a half inch and it is scored at one and three quarters and four and three quarters now this is going to be a rounding piece okay i'm going to go ahead and burnish on those score lines and use a couple of glue dots to attach this 
um, those ends together. Okay, we want this to be a, a similar piece to um, the rim of the pot. Okay, this will be this will be a round piece that will go um, that will support daisies. This will be the vertical. Okay, so this should be ready now. And like I said, see how the pot opens now. You can you can force it a little bit so that it gets in the habit of going to that round position. I'm going to take that vertical piece, that first piece of window sheet that we were talking about, and reveal the adhesive here. Okay, so remember this was that um, sticky strip. Whatever whatever you use, make sure it's something that's really um, really firm for like your 3D projects. Okay, and we are going to attach the back of that window sheet strip to the back of the pot and then the front, I'm sorry, the, the other side of the window sheet to the front middle of the pot. Okay, so we've made a vertical from the, the front middle of the pot to the, to the back middle. All right, and then we want to take this other piece, okay, and you can see that these are going to be supports now when we attach the flowers. I want that to be a cross piece to hold the flowers that are going to go out on the side. Um, I am going to attach that by putting some glue dots at the center back of it. And... I am going to slip that inside the verticals and I'm not just going to put it in there horizontally. I'm going to put it at a little angle because I think that'll be more natural for our flower arranging um, so that the left side is a little bit lower than the right side. And then I'm pressing that to the back um, window sheet piece. Then I'll take the front of that that round window sheet piece, the one that, that is sort of like the rim, and attach that. And I'm using a couple of glue dots here because I think this is gonna take a little bit of stress. I'm attaching that to the front vertical piece of window sheet. Okay, so now um, all we need to do is our flower arranging. Okay, so that's the fun part, but one thing that you need to keep in mind, and it helps if you have an envelope handy. If you want it to fit in an envelope, you need to make sure the flowers fit within these limits. Now, I already have my flowers made. I made them with the Daisy Lane stamp set and coordinating punch. I used the bigger punch for these flowers and the bigger flower. And I am going to place them, um, attaching them with glue dots to my window sheet strips here. All right, and I'm starting with the top one. Now I want to make sure the top one stays within the limits of the envelope, right? So that's why I've got the envelope here as a guide. If you have grid paper, that would work too. Um, but somehow keep in mind that you need to keep these within the constraints of an envelope if you wanna put it in an envelope. Okay, then I'm just going to attach the other flowers on the horizontal, the, the, the round um, window sheet piece. And let me have the Melon Mambo flower. This is Grapefruit Grove and I've got Melon Mambo. Um, my pot is Granny Apple Green. And then this flower is Pineapple Punch. So really fun summery colors. Of course you can change them for a different season. This will look great in the fall too. Okay, so I've got the three flowers arranged and you can see this kind of is coming up into the shape that we want. And we're going to do the same thing on the back, all right, to cover up. So it looks like a full pot of flowers. And put the Melon Mambo at the top this time. And then the other two, again, on that horizontal piece that kind of goes in a round, a circle around the pot. Uh, let's do the pineapple punch here. And the grapefruit grove over here. 
Uh, these were a uh, half inch circle punch to make that flower center. I didn't want to use anything two dimensional because I did want this to fit in a pot. Okay, so there you have the entire pot created with flowers. Now, of course, you can slip on your band and it goes under the pot there to hold it open. And then I just put a little greeting friend here. Now I cut that with one of my stitch shapes and I'm going to apply that to the base by putting a dimensional only over on this side, okay? Because I wanna leave room for that band to slip under this. And I'm just centering that in front of the pot. And I'm also going to add a little blueberry bushel bow at the front of the pot to finish it off. And then I'll show you how to um, easily put this in the envelope. Okay, so let me get a glue dot. And this is a trick, my, my friend Rose um, told me this because she was making these um, this spring after I first showed her how to do it. And she found an easy way to put them in an envelope. Okay, so if you're gonna fold it down, of course you've got all these you know petals sticking out. You take a piece of copy paper that's about the same size as a card and just fold that over the entire card, you can slip it right in your envelope without worrying about all those petals getting caught. And then you can just um, pull this, hopefully just that part out, yeah, and leave the, the flower pot behind. I put that band in there too. But that's that, it folds down um, really nice and flat and you can mail that. So I hope you'll give it a try. Here's another look at it. Um, super fun and thanks for your time. Bye.